Greetings everyone, this is non expert here back again with another video. Today we are going to be solving problem number 55 and difficulty simulated at is easy. This problem was asked by Microsoft and before we jump to, jump into this you know problem, I, I want to tell you that this particular problem is actually a system design a problem uh, or most likely you will see it in a system design interview and not in a coding or an algorithmic based interview. Uh, but you know, let that be aside, uh, let's go into the problem description. So, so we need to implement a URL short norm with the following methods. A shorten function which you know, takes in a parameter which is the URL parameter and shortens it to a six character alphanumeric string. Uh, and a restore function which short, you know, takes in a short or whatever URL you've sort of, you know, encoded um, and sort of returns the URL back. So pretty straightforward it's used a lot as well you can check out any urls for more documentation um but as i said before you would sort of see this problem in a system design problem uh and fortunately find a similar problem on lead code and the name of the problem is encode and decode tiny url and as usual i would sort of urge you guys to you know pause this video and check out the link given in the description below and try solving this problem on your own uh, but all in all, this is a pretty simple problem. Uh, the only consensus that you sort of want to make sure is that is this, or whenever this question is going to ask you, you need to sort of make sure that which all domains are you working with, what all restrictions are you being given. So for example, in lead code, the restriction that you have is that you do not have any databases as such, or there's no leverage of any databases that you could use, um, and the only language that you're coding on is Python. So you know you just have to make sure that you're solving the problem with whatever's been given to you. Uh, that's one thing, uh, and the other thing is that you know this problem. Uh, if if you have you know the flexibility of using whatever you want, uh, Geeks or Geeks has already given a pretty comprehensive way of solving this problem. So I suggest that you you check out the link in the description below or try checking it out on your own. Um, but the basic formulation over here is that you have one source of truth and you use that. Uh, but before I sort of go into the actual solution, which I have in mind. I want to go through a solution which one of my uh, colleagues actually suggested, uh, and I'll tell you that there's nothing wrong with this approach, as you know, as you would know, as you would see. Uh, but you know, as I go through it, I'll explain why it's not the correct solution or what the uh, interviewer would be expecting, at least. So the solution which which was there was basically that um, that part you just have a URLs list, and you just you know push all the elements inside your URLs list. And as you know, each element can be uh, indexed or sort of referenced through the index itself. So why don't we use the index, just pass back the index in our encode function, and our decode function, all we have to do is we just have to look for that index. Um, and that's pretty simple to do, you know, uh, for anybody who's a beginner, they would, you know, think of similar solutions. So let's just quickly do that. Let's just have a self.urls, which is the list. And all I have to do is I just have to, you know, append whatever I'm getting inside my, uh, whoops, sorry, yeah. So all I'm getting inside my uh, parameter, which is the long URL, and all I want to do is I want to return uh, the index, which is there. Now, do note over here that the index would basically be the length minus one. You know, that's pretty uh, easy to understand. So all you have to do is you just have to say, hey, return the length of self dot URLs, um, and you know, subtract that by, by minus one. Um, this is fine, you know, because what you'll do is you'll be getting an index back and inside your short URL, all you're going to be doing is you're going to be returning 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on and so forth. Now, when you sort of return this, all you have to do is you can see that um, I just have to reference the dot URLs because, you know, that's the list. And all I have to do is I just have to get the integer representation of the short URL, which is going to be the index at which the URL was stored. Right, and I can run this, and you can see that this should most likely work fine. Um, logically, there's no flaws over here. You know, the output is the correct output. Uh, are a few problems over here. So, as I mentioned before, this is more like a system design question. So, all in all, your your interviewers are going to look for how you're going to handle the scalability and how you're handling edge conditions. Again, you can see that this is working fine. This is not an incorrect solution. In no way, this is an incorrect solution. It is fine. If you have not been given any constraints, it works, right? Um, but I can tell you there are many problems with this. So for the first part, you know, you can just think of, uh, let's just say that long URL, the parameter which I'm just passing in is ABC, right? So what would happen 
is that you know you have ABC which will get appended to cells or URLs and then you have ABC appended again and again so as many times I keep on providing the same duplicate URLs no matter how many times I keep on you know giving those values it does not really matter it's going to still get appended inside cells or URLs and it's just taking unnecessary space you know because it's a duplicate I don't really you know care about it I could just you know get the index zero and use that and just formulate everything from there so you know, memory based stage is something which is you know uh, which you have to look at uh, other thing is that you know people can actually identify which url or how many urls are actually there inside of uh, your table or whatever right so that's not really efficient so uh, one thing that you want to make sure is that your uh, there's some sort of a layer between you or, or sorry, the user and the technology which is there so you know you can't just give zero one two three four and so on and so forth though it might be easier for them to understand for some reason uh, you know you still can't give it to them because that sort of identifies how many uh, numbers are there so if somebody just you know appends a short url or encode something they will just get back how many urls you have already stored um, that's something which is you know you'll have to sort of consider uh, and all in all, you know, if you if you sort of look at the Geeks or Geek Solution, uh, they sort of take out this layer instead of just doing a self.urls. You could just sort of think about this as self.urls. Just think of self.urls as table. And all you're doing is instead of just doing an append of an element, you're doing a uh, insert inside your new or inserting a new record or whatever you want to call it. Uh, and what that does is, going to you know, inside your table, you're going to have an ID. So the ID which is there is something that you already have, like your long URL, the length of this thing that you're returning was the ID that you were using. And on that, what you could do is you could sort of perform a base 64 encoding on it. But the reason for that is because any number that is already uh, in st on some base, you know, it can be converted to another base. And the reason why uh, this sort of, you know, say that you can convert into a, a base 62 representation, this is because, you know, if you sort of, you know, have a look at what all has been present to you, you have now, like all the characters from A to Z, and you have all the capitals from A to Z, uh, and this to combine is 52, and you have all numbers as well, which is you know 0 to 9, which is basically, so basically you have um, 62 ideal representations, and you can sort of you know convert that value and then sort of go forward from there, uh, and then you could sort of just you know store that value, encode it through that, uh, return a base 62 representation. And when you sort of decode it, all you have to do is you just have to convert the base 62 representation to a base 10 representation. And that's basically where uh, your record is actually sitting. So you can just reference it, do a select uh, call, and just get the values back. But again, we're not sort of working with that. We don't have a database, unfortunately. So I, I would urge you to you know check out the link in the description below and try checking out the Geeks for Geeks solution. Um, it's the best representation that I've seen. I, I could not do it any justice. Uh, but have a look at it. If you've not been given any constraints, that's the way to go. But over here, if you've been given this as uh, a, a problem or a coding problem and you've just been given a simple terminal, uh, there are a few ways to go about it. The one way which I told you sort of gives you the correct result, but you would not want to do that because the interview sort of shows that you've not handled a lot of cases. Uh, and the way I'm sort of you know thinking about you know solving this problem is by using a random function. Uh, but before I do that, let me just define a few variables. I'll just call self codes, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get all the letters which are there. Basically, inside the string module, what you can do is you can get all the uh, letters, which are basically all A to Z values and all capital A to capital Z values as well. And returns that, and I can do string dot digits as well, which returns um, values from zero to nine. Um, I can sort of you know prove that. Let me just do a quick self dot codes. Hopefully this should run fine. Um, yep, and you can see in the STD out, you have all the alphabets which are there, uh, all ASCII representations at least, uh, and you have numbers from zero to nine. And this is a string representation, so we could sort of use this um, for performing our random generation. So the way to sort of go about it is, is that you know, you know for a fact that you want to convert these values into a representation of six letters. So it's something which has been given in your daily coding problem, not over here, but inside the daily coding problem. So leveraging that fact, you know, what you could do is you could convert or sort of, you know, run a, run a loop to generate random variables, ran, six random variables through these self codes, whatever gets randomly accustomed to you, that's something that you can use. And the beauty of this code is that, you know, if you sort of, you know, look at the number of combinations which you're getting, it's basically um, 62 raised to the power of six. And the reason for that is because you have 
uh, six pieces and you know you have uh, 62 elements that can be pushed inside each so that's the number of entries that you can you know get uh, that's basically somewhere around i believe 56 billion or trillion or something like that but a lot right um and the chances of you, you know you getting the same value again or you know getting the same representation is actually 50 percent so on an average the number of attempts that might take you is basically two uh, for each example which is you know getting the same value and that's something that we can sort of use you know and if you want to you know update it you could update it from six letters to seven letters and your uh, number of combinations would sort of just increase again that's a little bit of maths um, but that really does not matter um, what we're going to do is we're going to have two main variables over here now so the two main variables is basically i'm going to name it as efficiently as i can i'm going to call it uh, url to code and this is going to be a dictionary and another which is going to be code to url now i don't need two dictionaries i, I just need one uh, but this is just done so that you know i can reference them easily so what i'm going to do is i'm going to try to generate a random number i'm going to check whether that random or not random number sorry so i'm going to try to generate a random code and if the random code is already there inside url to code um, and over here if i'm sorry i didn't explain this um, a key is basically going to be a URL and code is going to be a value and for here code is going to be a key and URL is going to be a value. So, you know, we're going to check that and use that to understand whether the code already exists or not. And if it does exist, you know, you just run the loop again and that's the way you want to sort of go about it. So, pretty self-explanatory, all I have to do is I just have to say while long URL, which has been passed as parameter inside my import function, whether it exists or it I mean, at least run the loop till it does not exist inside my self uh, URL to code. Pretty simple. All we are saying is, is that check whether long URL is there inside self URL. And it's very easy to identify what's the key here. Uh, the key is going to be URL and code is going to be the value. Cool. So all you have to do now is you just have to generate a random uh, combination and that's very easy to do. I'll just call it code. And all I have to do is I just need to make a simple join because I'm going to return a list of um, random variables. Uh, I'll keep on saying variables. I want to say random letters or whatever you want to call it. And I'm just going to say random dot choice. And this is the way to sort of go about it in Python. All I have to do is I just have to pass in self dot quotes, right? And run a for loop till the range of six. So basically, uh, run this loop for um, six times and basically run this random uh, six times get all the elements push them inside or sort of you know merge all of them inside one string and that's basically your code so um, again this is pretty simple uh, I, I'll try to show it to you in a print it's pretty easy if you sort of look at it uh, but now what we want to do is we want to make sure that this code which we have generated <clears throat> this code should not lie under code to URL if it does that means that this is a duplicate um, and we don't want that so we just do a check for it we just say hey if code is not in self self code to url then we can sort of you know, move forward with it and all you want to do now is you just want to say hey code to url needs to get updated with the code as the and the value is going to be a long url so let's just do that and similarly for your um uh, if you are able to code as well, so you just have to say, hey, you are able to code, it's going to be the same thing, long URL is equal to code. So all you're doing is, is that, you know, if this does not exist, if this value is randomly generated, it's unique, awesome, you know, push them inside this uh, dict representation, dictionary representation, and if it's not unique, run the loop again, keep on running it uh, till you get a value. And one other thing which is very, very important is that, you know, if you've been given the same long URL again, you know, you don't really need to perform the computation for it. So if long URL has already been passed through, you just say, hey, this already has a particular, you know, key value representation, return the key value representation. And that's it. So we just do that. We just have to say, hey, we need to return self.url to code. Because do note that inside URL to code, if you pass in the long, long URL as the key, you're going to get the code back. So we just return that and we're basically done. So what's going to happen here is just that, you know, you're running a loop 
till you get a unique identity file hook uh, and basically you know, keep on doing it from there. Pretty simple to understand. Uh, there's not much here to it. Uh, and we can do a little simple representation for um, the decode as well. So decode is going to be very, very simple. So you have short URL. Basically, you have the URL which has already been given to you, uh, which you've already decoded. And you know that's the code, right? So that's the code. So all you have to do is you need to convert the code to the URL. And for that, obviously, you'll be using the variable code to URL. Uh, so let's just do that. We just say code to URL and pass in the short URL which has been given to us. And short URL is just going to be something which is, you know, um, which has been passed through. And that's basically it. There's nothing much required over here. Uh, all you've done is you've just, you know, maintained two variables, which is the URL to code and the code to URL values. And this is just so that you can, you know, fetch the values, uh, average time of, of one complexity. Worst case scenario, you should not really look at for at least hash maps or dictionaries because, uh, you know, you don't, expect that many collisions um, but you know you're just expecting that this should be as efficient or as fast as possible so you can store those values and just move forward from there if you don't like you know having two variables to just store this you can just use the self url to code um, you know save that you know use that value move forward from there and when you do a decode all you have to do is you just have to run the loop or try to find a value which is equal to the short url and then return the key um, it's pretty simple, it's pretty straightforward, and again, this is like a, a very optimal approach. It does work, and you know, there's not much here to it. It's it's a very simple understanding that you know you're generating a value randomly, or re generating 62 values, uh, or rather six values, 62 uh, at a possibility of 62 um, letters, and then sort of moving forward from there. So let's just try running this once. And before I sort of try running this, let me just print this code so that you know we have at least one code with us, um, so that we can have a look at it on how it's being generated. So also you can see that you know it's generating some random variable. And if I run this again, you know it's going to return something different. Um, and that's just because of the random, you know, the random function which we have. Uh, and that's what I was trying to explain as well. You know, the probability of you getting the same number at average time is at max to max two. Um, and that's just because of the mathematics, some computations which are which sort of come into play over here. Uh, but all in all, you can see that you get the same output, which is the same as the expected output, and then you can move forward from there. Uh, cool. Let's just try uh, submitting the solution, and hopefully, this should get submitted. And awesome, you can see that's faster than 42% of the Python online submissions, and Memory wise, it's doing pretty well. Uh, you can sort of make this more faster. I, I will not sort of, you know, urge you to do that. Uh, the way to sort of do that, if you want to do it, is to, you know, perform a few more optimizations on the for loops. But all in all, you know, you're performing pretty well uh, given with the constraints which you have. And again, this is not the correct solution. I mean, it is the correct solution, but it's not the optimal approach because in an interview, if it's a system design interview, your interview is going to expect you to use a database as well. And that's something which I explained before. You use the ID, convert it into uh, a representation of base 62 uh, as your you know encoding function. And when you try to decode it, just decode the base 62 representation into a base 10 representation. That's basically your ID, which you want to check. And then you can move forward from there. Uh, but again, that's it. If you've been given this question as a hacker and test that's the way to go about it and again if you have any comments or if you have any better solutions or if, if you have any doubts then do let me know in the comment section below i would love to hear back from you and if you did like this video do give a like and do subscribe to this channel if you have discussion over here and we'd love to have you on board with us and if you've already subscribed to this channel you're awesome we all know it and have a great day